God bless you and good morning. My name is Jonathan Sattel, and I am here with you on this wonderful new station to talk to you a little bit about worship, worship the Lord through music, through prayer, through speaking, through thoughts, through painting, any art form, any form that's uh, an extension of ourselves, hopefully we'll be able to put into the moment and discuss worship with you. Worship is, is a, an important thing for me. Uh, I used to actually feel that uh, worship um, just came after I learned how to sing and after I learned how to control the music part of my life. But in fact, those are only roads that we take to worship the King, to get to His heart, to speak to Him. He's our friend, He's our brother, He's our God, He's our absolute Abba. So it, this is a real privilege for me to come to you today. I like to um, amplify whatever we talk about with uh, stories. And uh, I have a story about the touch of the Master's hand. You see, I'm going to read you this uh, story. It's actually the lyrics of an old hymn, but I'm going to read it as a poem, and I'd like you to enjoy it with me and to identify with everything you hear that it in fact is your story and mine and everybody else's who listens to this report. Twas battered and scarred, so the auctioneer thought it's scarcely worth his time to waste much time on an old violin, yet he held it up with a smile. When am I bidding, good folk, he cried. Who'll start the bidding for me? One dollar, a dollar. Who's, who'll say two? Two dollars. Two dollars going once, three dollars. Three dollars going once, three dollars going twice, but no, no. Nobody wanted to pay. $3 for this violin that is, well, look at it. Can you see it? It's here. It's dirty. And it's been around and around and around. And look at it. There isn't anything that you could do with it. Maybe you could tighten it up, but it doesn't hold. From the room far back, a gray-haired man stepped forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening the loosened strings, he played a melody pure and sweet as a caroling angel sings. The music ceased, and the auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, said, Now, what am I bidding for this old violin? And he held it up by the bow. A thousand dollars. Who'll make it two? Two thousand. Who'll make it three? Three thousand going once. Three thousand going twice. Three thousand going, going, gone, cried he. The people cheered. Some of them tried. We don't understand. What changed the worth of the violin? Quick came the reply. Twas the touch of the master's hand. Think about it a moment. The master's hand cleaned up that old violin. Many a man with life out of tune, and this is an autobiographical sketch, perhaps you too can identify. Many a man with life out of tune, battered and scarred with sin, is auctioned cheap to a thoughtless crowd, much like this old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, and a game, and he travels on. He's going once, he's going twice, he's going and almost gone. But the master comes, and the foolish crowd can never quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. I want to tell you that the touch of the Master's hand has done much for me. I can't speak for you. Only you can do that. But I can speak for me. And my life before I met Abba was a shambles. 
It was completely a shambles. I was a working musician for many, many years before I took that music and dropped everything I had, went through the eye of the needle, was touched by the master's hand and understood why I had this gift of music, which is why you have any gift that's out there. You are not responsible for the gift that you have. Only, only God is responsible for that. But what you do with it, now that's what we are responsible for. And I had to go through a lot of training, a lot of things that upset me. I have to tell you. I'll, I'll tell you one story. I was working at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. I was a singer with an acapella group called the Voices of Liberty. Low bass was my voice range. And I joined this group and I noticed that every single one of the people in this group had a voice. They could sing. Oh my, they could sing. The tenors, they could sing. The first and second tenor. The baritone, great singers. The altos, first and second. Ladies usually, great singing. And sopranos, first and second, great singing. But I want to tell you that when you first join this group, the first thing you have to do is learn how to hear, learn how to listen. It's like the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, H-E-A-R. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one God. And so if we listen, we can hear. If we don't listen, there's no hearing. Now, these people were really, really wonderful. And I had to learn that when I joined a group like that, a cappella, which means no musical instrumental accompaniment, only the voice was the only thing that we had to join together and to sing. And so the song itself became the one entity, became the song, not the singer. And so I remember I was ready to show them that I could do a solo. Well, I was with them maybe three months and I still hadn't had a solo. Well, I mean, the tenors had a solos. First and second tenor, they had a solo. I didn't. The altos had a solo. Six months passed. The, the, the uh, sopranos had solos, first and second. The baritone had a solo. A year passed. I still didn't have a solo. I would come home, smoke was coming out of my ears. My wife said, what is the matter? I said, they don't like me. Now, maybe you have said the same words about your boss about your pastor, about your rabbi, about your, the people that you work with. Oh, they don't like me. They don't talk to me. Well, maybe it's not you. They don't like so much as themselves, but here we go. So I was standing there ready to do my solo. And I said, Derek, Derek was my, my uh, conductor. He said, I said, I'm ready to do a solo. He said, all right, I'd like you to do the battle hymn of the Republic. Now we know what that song is. It's a great song, a great American folk song. It's also a Christian song. It talks about the Lord. And so I, was, I wanted to show them why was it that they, 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 they uh, just took their time giving me the solo. So I remember the, the room was at the American Pavilion in the Amer uh, at Epcot. And we would come out in a little semicircle and we would sing, the girls would blow the pitch pipe, and then the soloist would come out and sing. So I'm ready now. So, soloist, now there were about 300 people there, and my director sat right there in front of me. And I said, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to show them that they made a mistake by not giving this soloist a solo. After all, I was the soloist. Perhaps you too can understand what I'm saying. This thing in your heart. Perhaps you can. So I walked out. There were all these people here and everybody, of course, knew the song. And the group behind me, they were going, Lou, 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 something like that, but much prettier. So they blew the pitch pipe, Lou, Lou, and I stepped out. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. And I began to melt. Perhaps you too can identify with this moment. I forgot the words to the song. Everybody in the room was ready to hear those words. After all, 
the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Everybody in the room know this, knew the song. My group behind me, they were Lou, 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 Lou. And they thought it was very funny that I had forgotten the words. So they couldn't really sing Lou. <laughs> they could not sing and laugh at the same time. And they were laughing. Oh, they thought it was so great. And I was humiliated. I was devastated. And do you know, you can't be humiliated if you're humble. And I stood there, humiliated, devastated, oh, horrified. I stopped. It was over. My director was feeding me the words. I ran in the back, hid, hid from everyone. After a while, the group came back. They said, Jonathan? <laughs> that was really great. And I said, please. Derek came to me and he said, Jonathan, it's okay. It's all right. You did fine. I said, no, Derek, I did not do fine. Furthermore, Derek, I am not to have another solo as long as I live. I am not a soloist. And he looked at me for a long time. He said, Jonathan, now you're a soloist. Now that you remember what you had in mind, now that you know that you're not that which you think you are, you can become that which you have never been, the soloist. There's only one soloist in our lives. His name, Yeshua. He's the great soloist of things in our present, our past, and our future. Yeshua, Abba, He is the one that will take you to one place and to another. You need to just worship Him. You need that touch from the Master's hand. Oh God, God of our fathers, I just pray right now that you would take our desire for self-worth and put it into something a little more valuable, and that is your worth for us in our lives. That the Lord would touch you and clean you like you were that old violin. That the Lord would actually let you become the violin, the soloist, the, the essence of the song from which you have become, really. There's only one thing we can do, and that is to pray and to Look toward heaven for his help on a continual basis. Many a man with life out of tune, battered and scarred with sin, why, that was me, is auctioned cheap to a thoughtless crowd. How about you? Have you been auctioned cheap to a thoughtless crowd? Much like this old violin. Remember the story. Remember the story of the battered, broken, out of tune violin and by the touch of the master's hand it revived that violin into something sweet and melodious the master comes forth and the foolish crowd can never quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that's wrought by the touch of the master's hand I would invite you to come through this area of your life. Come with me, that you might call us, that we can pray with you, and that we would come directly into your life with the prayers of the saints, that you would be strengthened and come forward. People cheer, you know. Some of them cried, we don't understand what changed its worth. They're going to look at you and they say, what happened to him? He's so different, like they did with me so many years ago. Now I stand before you, retuned, a little bit shined up, and ready to play, ready to sing. How about you? Are you ready to give your life to do what God has ordained you to do? Perhaps you don't know what that is yet. You have to be still and let him know that he is God. God bless you, and till the next time, shalom. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, the wonderful name of God. Hallelujah, 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 praise his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, the wonderful name of God. Hallelujah, 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 by the wonderful name of God. Hallelujah, 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 by the wonderful name of God. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, the wonderful name of God. Hallelujah, 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 praise his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, the wonderful name of God. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 by the wonderful name of God. Hallelujah, 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 by the wonderful name of God. The wonderful name of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The wonderful name of God. Wonderful name of God. Wonderful name of God. called When I Worship You. And, um, you know, if you've never heard a song like this, I'd like you to stop for a moment and just meditate on the words. In fact, it is an autobiography. My dear friend Phil Klein wrote this song. And when he wrote it, he must have had me in mind. But maybe he had you in mind. I'd like you to close your eyes because oftentimes, you know, you can see more with your eyes closed than you can with them open. This intro for this song needs you to experience this song as if it were a painting, as if you were to climb inside the painting. You can watch it from the outside, say, oh my, what a pretty painting, and go off and do your own thing. However, if you climb inside of it, if you penetrate it, if you go inside the song, you can experience the colors as the artist who wrote it had in mind, and perhaps the Lord can do something in your life for you when you worship the King. number one doing it my way praising only me but Lord your love prevailed you you held me when I failed and 
When I heard your call, you brought me to my knees. You broke me of it all, and Lord, you set me free. When I worship you, all my fears are gone. Everything is new. You, you and I are one. And when I sing to you, the power of the Lord covers all I do when, when I worship you. so ashamed I've wasted so much time and all that was to gain kept slipping through my hands and hiding from my eyes but now I do believe your spirit lives in me I won't be deceived Cause now I know the truth You're alive in me Now I'm alive in you When I worship you All my fears are gone Everything is new You and I sing to you the power of the Lord covers all I do when when I worship you covers all I do when when I worship Should be loved.